Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and I want to tell you about a book that I read about five years ago that totally changed my life. It's called Profit First. I have been in business uh, all my life. You know, a little business here, a little business there, and then I'll have a real job for a while, and then I'll figure out a way to go back and, and have an art business for a while. I just kind of do that off and on. I started like over 50 years ago, but I never actually understood what a profit was. I always thought I was profitable if I had some money in my pocket. This is one of the things that I, I sold in my first business. That was over 52 years ago. It was a product that I could have sold profitably, but I didn't. I started another business 10, 15 years later, selling my baby animal dolls. Here, here's one of them here. And again, I, I sold every single one of those that I took down to the Saturday market or to a, an art fair, but I never made a profit because I didn't know what profit meant. Now you probably think you know what profit is, and you probably do because you're smarter than I am, <laughs> but this is what I thought. If something cost me a dollar to make it and I sold it for ten dollars then I just made nine dollars in profit. That's what I thought. I grew up in a family where everybody had their own business. I grew up on a lake resort. My brother and I every single summer we had to work there. Both of my grandfathers had businesses totally different kinds but they both had businesses. But the one thing that we never talked about at home when I was growing up was money. It was like don't Seriously, it was like it was like sex or something. Don't talk about it. And if you got caught talking about the money, you'd actually get in trouble. So I didn't know how profit worked. I didn't know what it meant. I thought it meant you take your costs and you take how much money you sell the thing for, and that's your profit. But it's not. So what should my parents and my grandparents and my math teachers and my art teachers, what should they have told me before I started my very first art business? Or at least somebody should have told me <laughs> somewhere in the 50 years in between. What I needed to know was that the art business is separate from the artist and that an art business has to be run as a business just like any other business. Uh, if you don't run it as a business and it's not going to make it as a business for very long. Back when I was selling those those wolf prints, I sold a lot of them and I always sold them for more money than it cost me to make them because they were printed and I had to pay the printer. I always knew that I made more than that. So I thought I was making a profit because all the money <laughs> that was coming into the, from the sale of those prints, I considered that to be my money. Not the business's money, but mine. So I didn't pay myself a wage. I didn't to look down, I didn't look at any numbers to say, okay, here's how much the business is making. Here's uh, how much the business can afford to pay its employee and this is how much left over after all of the operating expenses including my wages for profit. That profit then would have gone into a separate account, uh, a savings account to act as a like a security buffer in case something went wrong. Things go wrong all the time like recessions or well recently COVID or uh, you might have an opportunity come up because somebody wants a whole bunch of of your item that you're making and you need some capital so that you can invest back into the business so you have the machinery or the equipment or the materials or something so that you can actually produce that thing and make take advantage of that opportunity. The, the business itself has to run as a separate entity from the people who work there. And I didn't I just honestly didn't know that because I was the only person working there and as long as money was coming in and I knew that I was selling the product for more money than it cost to make it, then I thought that was profit. I didn't, I didn't see it as a separate thing. I just saw it as my money. Now, why does that really make a difference even on a daily basis? You're, you you got money coming in, uh, you know that you, you've done all your numbers before you start hopefully and so you know that you can make enough of your product so that you would be able to pay yourself a wage if you sold everything that you make. Hopefully you know that. You, you can figure that out really easily. You just um, check to 
how many of your items can you make every week. You already know that because you want to make them for sale. So you already know how many you can make, hopefully. Um, you know how much that each one of them is going to cost. And hopefully you've done some market research out on Etsy. Uh, you've gone to local fairs. You've, you, some way or another, you found a, a, a reasonable way to price your items so you know how much you're going to sell them for. So you just subtract the, uh, the operating costs from the price that you're going to sell them for. And that's, that's how much your, your business is going to have as income. And then out of that income, how much of, of it is going to go towards your wages and how much of it is going to go to profit. That's that. It was that part that I never figured out because I always figured out that everything that's coming into the business is mine. But that's not the way it works and that's not the way to build a business that actually has any sustainability. In the case of the doll business, the, the, the big issue for that one was that I had just bought myself a job. I knew that they sold and they sold really well, but I could only make about six or eight every single week. And in order to make more money that weekend, I had to spend that week making some more. And it, it worked. I was able to make enough of them and sell enough of them that I, I was able to quit my job and make a living, you know, a small living doing it. But when I realized that I really, really don't like making these things every single week, the same thing over and over again, I don't want to do it. There was no, there was no money in the business for me to hire someone to do it instead. So since I didn't have that cushion and I, and my, my employee got so tired of it, she wanted to quit. <laughs> that business went out of business and I went back to work doing something else. So not making enough money is not the only way that an art business can fail. <laughs> but you can build in some security if you use the system that's in that book. You actually know the numbers. You actually built in the profit margin first, like he says to do. You know for sure you're making a profit so that the business itself, the separate entity called a business is separate. It has its own savings account. It has its own money to invest for opportunities. There's money in the bank for the business itself in case of something like a recession, for instance. And it's also paying you enough of a wage so that you can have your own safety system, your own savings account in case, you know, in case your car breaks down or you have an injury or something. You, you have a little bit of cushion there for your own personal emergencies. And the business has money that it can use as capital. Then, then you actually have a going business. But if you keep it all clumped together as you yourself as the artist, like I always did before, then when those emergencies come up or when the opportunity shows up or when you just get plain tired of doing it all by yourself, <laughs> then you've got a real problem. Now, I have tried talking a whole bunch of people into reading the book, and so far I haven't been successful at all. Most people just say, eh, I know that stuff already. I don't, I don't need to read a book. I already know everything that's in it. Which may be true. Maybe maybe they do know all that stuff. But also, maybe I just don't explain it as well as I should. So I'm going to put a link down below. I'm going to go find a video where Mike will actually explain what's in the book. Maybe he will be more convincing than I am. Because I really hope that if you're thinking about starting a business, uh, selling your own artwork, I really hope that, that you read that book first. Because it will make a huge difference. It takes all the stress out of it. You would not believe how much stress it takes out of it. Just just the the quarterly income taxes that you have to pay, that was a crisis. Every three months I would have a crisis because I would have money in my savings account, my personal savings account. Of course, the business didn't have one, so at my, it was all in my personal savings account. And every three months I'd have to write a check and take that money out and send it to the IRS. It felt like they were stealing my money, <laughs> which... Okay, maybe they are a little bit, but now that that doesn't happen anymore because my business has money set aside for the IRS taxes and I do have to write the check every every three months, but it doesn't come out of my money. It comes out of the business's money. And so everything is taken care of. The stress just totally disappeared. That's just one really little teeny stress 
but it is actually important and it's just one of the things that, that this book has done for me. So, so I do hope you'll read it. Now go make something and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.